Hello guys, welcome back to Arxangel RC and the first in a series of videos dedicated to my new MyFly Dream Mini Crosswind build. Just so you know what to expect in the coming weeks, this video will deal with the build of the plane and installation of electronics. Next one will be the review of the plane, then a review of the antenna tracker, followed by a review of the new MFD Crosshair Autopilot, and last but not least, a review of the Dragon Link system that I'm also using for the first time on this build. But let's get to work because I really do hate it when videos turn out longer than they need to be and sadly this is one of those. As with most large FPV and mapping design planes of late, this one also comes completely unassembled so you will have to put it together and I mean all of it. MFD are considering selling a fully assembled plug and play version capable of up to 4 hours of flight time but that is still in the works. Unlike the MyFly Dream Nimbus which came mostly assembled save for a few pieces, the Mini Crosswind has nothing done on it in the factory which is not actually a bad thing especially if you want to put an expensive camera on it for mapping. Personally, I would prefer to put it together myself, so I would be certain nothing will come unglued in the air. So the first thing you immediately notice would be the packaging, as the plane is encased in a styrofoam block with cutouts for all the parts, which greatly reduces the risk of damage during transport, so expectedly there was no shipping damage to any of the parts in there. I can tell you right now that a lot of manufacturers could take a page out of MFD's book in this regard. The big crosswind came packed in the same manner, so it seems this is becoming the norm now with MFD. Once I took all the parts out of the box, I noticed that the foam is quite dense and of high quality. The injection process was obviously properly done, as there were no defects on the parts for using not enough material, for instance, like I've seen on other models. Pretty much everything you need to put this together is included, save for a few cables that I found I had to add myself to the mix to do this properly, and the glue. The plastic bits for the wings and tail do look high quality and are quite thick and the wing connectors did also look very solid and have even more pins on them so you can wire even more stuff out to the wings. I also noticed that all of the parts fit exceptionally well, no warps, no defects, it was just awesome. So little by little I immediately started gluing stuff together and as usual the glue I used is the Henkel Moment Classic Universal Glue which slightly softens EPO while drying but then it hardens back up so I do have to use it carefully so there are no wrinkles because of the softening. It is a touchy process but the bond is exceptionally strong. I really love the way the front canopy has been designed now with a clip that goes on the front spar rather than a latch and on the bottom of the canopy there are two slide locks that prevent it from coming out in flight. Light and simple. I will also be using the FPV nose piece so I can more easily mount a camera and eventually a gimbal. Interesting thing is that this plane also allows for a front mounted motor which was a surprise since I did not know that before I got the plane. For a second there I did consider it but it was going to ruin my FPV view from the deck so decided against it. Still I did glue in the wooden mount though, could try it at some point. Absolutely love the tight fit of the nose piece which doesn't require gluing to stay in place once the fuselage is glued together and has a convenient opening in it to accommodate the airspeed sensor. I have to say though, using the full length canopy does make the nose section quite beautiful even if it does become useless for FPV. You also get two options to fill that cutout at the bottom of the fuselage. Both appear to have been designed to accommodate mapping gear but one is a regular bottom on the outside and the other has areas to allow the installation of a landing gear which is a nice thought. Turning my attention to the wings, the carbon spars in those do come pre-installed although I have a feeling those were inserted there during the injection process so they won't be falling off anytime soon. As on the previous models, the servo mounts are plastic housings with a proper cover and this time it is actually better designed than the one on the big crosswind model. Even though the plastic hinges have not been installed, the holes for them are there 
and they are provided and it is quite easy to glue them on. Same goes for the other control surfaces, although I was surprised to find that they were two different models of hinges. The tail got one model and the ailerons got another, but as long as they get the job done, I don't mind. Now, the motor nacelles are something that I find very weird on this plane, to be honest. The previous two models had proper nacelles that were rooted in the wing the right way and you could easily swap motors and ESCs and have access to all the wiring in there. These, on the other hand, are simpler and will be lighter overall, but literally only rely on gluing the foam to the wing. And basically that is what is holding them on there. At this point I was glad I was using this particular glue because it does provide an exceptionally strong bond and still remains flexible to allow for some abuse. I guess only time will tell how well these will work out. One major downside of this design is that if I have to replace a motor for instance or an ESC I will probably have to cut into the foam to do that and it is a structural part of the nacelle. Guess I will have to keep these interventions to a minimum. You also get a set of stickers to cover these round openings and make the plane look pretty. Only the ones where the nacelles need to go do not need to be covered but that is in case you are going to use the twin motor version and not the single motor at the front of the nose. The plastic wing adapters were quite easy to glue since they were such a good fit, didn't even need tape to hold them in properly. I also took the chance to glue on the little teeth thingies on the canopies, these grab onto the plastic plate underneath the canopy in the slots there and when you push it back they really bite down and the spar clip snaps into place making sure the canopy stays attached during flight. Next up were the tail bits and the hinges as well. For some I used the universal glue but thought it is a bit too liquid so for the vertical I used some clear foam glue I had lying around. They both did a good job. Now the plastic bits on the fuselage did require some help to fit properly but not a big deal. Some woodworking clamps did the job nicely. I also did glue the two inner spars to one of the fuselage halves at this stage to make it easier later on when I'm putting them together. There is also this little carbon tube at the tail, do not forget to glue that one in as well. And then it was time to put the fuselage together and here I did have to use some tape and again some of those clamps at the tail but it was a nice job in the end. Once that was done I glued on the bottom cover, chose the one without the landing gear option because I really do not see myself installing one. Used some paperweights because that is what lithium polymer batteries are used for now with all those lithium ions around to hold it pressed down well while the glue was drying. Next in was the rudder servo and that is the only one that does not come with a plastic holder so basically the only one that I will not be able to replace it will without taking some foam out as well and having to glue it all over again. The big crosswind was also like that and I really don't know why this one got overlooked but I do hope I do not have any problems with it. Next in were the battery and flight controller plates and I did use some more paperweights to press them down for optimal adhesion. Took the chance to also glue in the plastic FPV plate in the nose and yeah, I do have quite a lot of those weights. The rear canopy latch was also glued in and so was the receiver box and only then did I muster enough courage to glue the top part of the motor nacelles on the wings. I do hope they are pointing straight and true. While that was drying the vertical stabilizer went in the fuselage and I do think I also managed to glue it straight but I did forget to insert the metal joiner for the elevator pieces before I put them together so I had to do some foam melting in order to put it in after the fuselage was assembled so keep that in mind in case you don't feel like digging a hole just so you can insert it afterwards. Don't forget to insert those plastic spaces before the bolts as they are used to center properly the control surface adapters. 
Now, a word of caution due to not looking at the manual, which is available for download from the MyFly Dream website, I did skip inserting these metal bits into the wing adapters on the fuselage side, which are supposed to hold the wing locks and supposedly to make that system last a lot longer compared to locking into the plastic. But oh well. Doing things in a hurry does lead to such things, but I don't think it will be an issue either way, the plastic seems strong enough. Next, I piled all bits of the fuselage on the scales and it worked out to about 1080 grams for the glued fuselage and all of its bits and wiring, which is actually not too bad for a twin motor model with so much plastic on it and such massive spars. Now that the fuselage was all glued up, it was time to take care of the wiring. Since the rudder servo was already there, I plugged its extension cable first along with an extension lock just to make sure there are no surprises during a more turbulent flight. Next I sorted all of the provided wires, took some measure of how much more wire I'm gonna have to add to that to actually make it all work and got to work soldering the wing connectors. The holes for them in the wings and in the fuselage parts are identical so really it does not matter how you're going to mount them, just make sure you get the polarity right so you don't burn out something. The pins are numbered so it should be easy to do it properly. Since I didn't want to solder on too many connectors and to use adapters for the power cables, I decided to solder those to the second connector only once they were already inserted in the plane. So I basically inserted them with one of the connectors, then pulled them out on the other side and then soldered the second connector. Will be a bit of a hassle to remove the connectors for repair or reconfiguration, but I am hoping I won't have to do that anytime soon, if at all. Next I mounted the other connectors to each respective wing and tightened them down as best as I could. I had gotten the wire length just right so was happy about it. Will be looking cleaner when I tidy it up. Next I extended the cables on the wing servo so they can reach the cable from the connector as I wanted it to be in the wider channel so I don't have to cut any foam on the wing for the bulky servo connectors. Along with that I also installed the control horns and push rods, centered the servo and shortly after the wings were almost done. Next I installed the locking mechanisms both on the wings and on the tail Make sure that arrow on the wing plastic bit is pointing towards the button or towards the bottom of the wing. The plate holding the locks on the tail fins did require some sanding to fit into the plastic but it was a quick job and was done in no time. I then put servo extensions and locks on the tail servos and inserted them into the plastic screwing them down with the provided screws. Then I did the push rods there as well and also for the rudder and so the tail was done and working. And then when test fitting the wings, before gluing the nacelles on there, I noticed there was a gap between the wing and the fuselage and I wasn't able to push the wing any further in. I have a feeling the connectors are sticking out a bit too much and are causing the issue but it doesn't really bother me because at this point I was glad I hadn't glued in those metal plates since I wouldn't have been able to lock the wings in. Before gluing the nacelles, I installed the ESCs in there with double sided tape and also installed the motors from the Believer while I'm waiting for the 520 kV motors meant for this plane to arrive from my flight dream. I did all of that beforehand because the ESCs I am using did not have any cables on the motor side of things so I wouldn't have been able to connect the motor once I glued them on. And again, making good use of those paper weights. And this was actually the last thing to be glued on this plane. All looked good and straight but I did have to cut some foam around the motor as it was rubbing being a little wider than what was meant to fit in there. Finally I took care of the wiring and was done with the wings. Putting them on the scales revealed that they were only 0.2 grams apart so I would say a job very well done on the wire lengths, amount of glue used and amount of solder used.
And so we get to the really interesting bit, the autopilot install. And in this case, that would be the new MyFly Dream Crosshair, which also features a color OSD, amongst other things. I will not be going into too much detail on its setup here, since that will be left for its own video a bit later on. But I can tell you that firmware updates are super easy and programming is done in a very simple way via the OSD from your radio just like the old one. So this set includes the autopilot itself, a GPS unit, the power sensor module which can operate in a 50 amp or 100 amp mode, a seriously large 12 volt and 5 volt output 3 amp S back to power the servos, autopilot and video system, the input output extension board, the airspeed sensor and all of this weights the not so modest 163 grams which I would agree is a bit high compared to some of the racing copter flight controller solutions that do combine quite a lot of stuff but it also does include all of the wiring and everything is done for you and is the proper length for the mini crosswind and I'm sure will fit a lot of other planes without modifications. So basically all you do is plug the stuff together and go flying. It is that simple. Probably adding all the modules and wires to a Matic wing won't make it much lighter than this anyway but I will find out soon enough as I will be playing with one of those. So first one in the plane was the autopilot with its back pointing forward because the other way around would have made it very hard to reach the wiring to do any changes later on. Good news is you can tell the autopilot it is rotated in the settings so it would work properly despite this situation. Next to it I placed the I.O. board, both are secured using 3M double sided pads. Airspeed sensor went into the nose and I wrapped the rubber tube with some foam and inserted it into the hole which secured it quite well and did not require any gluing. Sensor itself is mounted on the inside of the fuselage and the cable goes all the way back to the I.O. board. Next I put the Y cables on the ESC and servo cables coming from the wings. They are color coded so I can differentiate them more easily. One is orange, red and brown. The other one is white, red and black and those are provided for you with the plane. Then I connected all servos to the autopilot servo rail before moving on with other connections as that will make it harder to plug them in later on. The GPS did get mounted in its allocated space but I did have to bend the pins at 90 degrees to make it fit well in there. It should plug into the blue connector on the autopilot. Next thing is the telemetry radio cable which will actually connect to the telemetry port of the Dragonlink V3 receiver and make use of its telemetry function thus removing the need for one additional radio on board the plane and on the ground. Power module got zip tied to the spar tube and it should plug into the red port on the autopilot. The SBEC also got installed and all of the connectors and wiring for it is provided and done for you so you just connect it. 12 volt goes into the autopilot power connector and the 5 volt goes into the servo rail. It gets power from the white JST connector coming from the power sensor. Next was the harness connecting the autopilot to the I.O. board and finally it was time to do some cable management to clean things up and make them pretty and then to power the system and see what will burn out. Luckily nothing burned out so I was ready to move forward. The FPV system was next and it consists of a Foxia Arrow FPV camera and a 2000 mW AKK Dominator video transmitter for which I printed a special mount so it could get some cooling even mounted inside the plane. I will have to punch some air inlets at the front of the fuselage but all in good time. Besides, I will be running it at 250 mW for starters anyway. Camera and video transmitter plug into the I.O. board which also provides 12 volt power for them and I have been assured that it will easily power the video transmitter even at 2000 milliwatts which will make things easier when I get to those power levels and I don't have to provide an additional power source. Next up was the Dragonlink system and in particular for this plane the micro receiver. 
decided to go with it because of the smaller size since the larger one would not fit inside the receiver compartment. This one still has telemetry, although only at 25 milliwatts, but it should be enough for a few kilometers just to verify that everything is working as it should. As a receiver, it should be good to the full distance the system is capable of. So, lots of kilometers. After flashing the receiver and the module with the latest firmware and doing some setup in the configuration software, things which I will cover in a dedicated video, I bound the receiver and module together and proceeded to install the receiver in the plane. For that purpose, I needed a cable from the SBUS port to the IO board as well as one for the RSSI. The telemetry cable did have to be custom made to fit, but that was not too big of a deal. I did use the shortest antenna that I have for this system and I still had to coil it up a few times inside the receiver box, otherwise the cable is just too long. The antenna itself got inserted partly into the fuselage and taped to the vertical stabilizer so I think it should give me some pretty good range. It does not seem to be interfering with the servos but they are digital after all. And so, with that the plane was finally complete. Well. Almost, I still had to add a proper recording camera to the front, so I decided to go with one of the original DJI Osmo Action adapters, which would allow me to easily mount one of the Feiyu Tech wearable gimbals on there should I choose to. So, last thing to do was weight the plane. So 1760 grams is without battery and camera. Once I add those, weight jumps up to just over 2800 grams. And if I also add in the gimbal, it would be around 3 kilograms for a 1.6 meter wingspan plane. Hmm, I guess we will see how it flies soon enough. But I do remember the day when 2.5 kilograms was way too much for the 2 meter Volantex FPV Raptor. Fingers crossed, this plane behaves better at that weight. I'm also going to be using the new crossbow mini antenna tracker from MyFly Dream and have decided to give this linear 5.8 GHz patch antenna a try and let's see how it will perform. Since I am using the MyFly Dream Autopilot, I do not need any additional modules for the tracker to work. The Autopilot will send everything required via the video link, but again, the tracker will be looked into in more detail in its own video in due time. So, now the plane is completely assembled and equipped and ready for flight, which finally brings this video to an end and I can only hope that I haven't bored you to death. Next video will be the flight review of the plane and because this one turned out a bit more detailed than I intended, I hope to be able to keep the next one to a more manageable length. But until then, links for all items shown and used in this video can be found in the description below and should you decide to buy literally anything via those links, you would be supporting this channel at no additional cost to you and you will have my eternal gratitude as this is my full time job. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and I would like to say a big thank you to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. If you have enjoyed this video and found it useful, please feel free to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to also hit that bell button so you can get a notification when I upload a new video. Also consider following me on Facebook for more regular updates. Happy and safe flying and I will see you again soon.